All right, everybody. I decided to do some of this on camera. I'm using this guy to get it. I didn't realize there was some 3D printer resin on here. The um, UV kind. I had to clean it up really quickly to get it off. But this is how I'm removing these supports on the bottom of this thing. And this is the part that is heaviest with supports, I think. Yeah, you can hear them just cracking as they come off. Most of the supports came off with little or no problem on most of these parts. The ones I'm working on right now are the ones that scared me the most, I'm afraid. Yeah, look at this thing. Mm. There it goes. This is about halfway done now. I got her halfway back. Now, it's going to look pretty ugly. I'm going to have to sand the back of this thing. I want to get it clear. Look at what it looks like underneath those supports. That is pretty ugly compared to all the rest of my printouts. So I might reprint this part here vertical anyhow. Because it's just not pretty. I mean, I can do it. I got the time before Miri gets here to reprint this part vertically. That's not an issue. It's just that gold part right there. I don't think I can print it vertically very nicely. I just don't think it will. Now, the support in the side in the center here is coming right out. You can hear it pop a little bit, but it's coming right out. See? So anyhow, that's what I'm doing to remove supports. Both of these pieces look pretty bad on the underside. And this thing looks so good everywhere but these two parts. So I am, again, trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. I will, again, probably reprint this, load the black up, and print it. I've already done the slicer files and everything. It's even pretty rough along here. It printed pretty roughly, period. So I will probably reprint these two shoulder pieces, especially since I got that on there and they show up so well. All right. Let's move on. These don't have supports, so they are done. The feet don't. I mean, this is support material in here. I can remove this. I can remove this, but I'm just going to leave it. It doesn't need to be done. Moving on to this. This is going to be another fun one to remove supports on. Now, I have got chisels here. I bought these a long time ago, these Micromark chisels. They should help me pull this stuff out really well, too. Like that one, and that one should be good. Let me set this aside, and oh yeah, this one right here ought to be really good at this too. Okay, this little flat blade right here. Now, there are supports on the back of this back here, and you just need to pop the supports free a little bit. The supports don't have much of a uh, surface area binding them to the part. So usually these supports come out pretty quickly. You just got to get them knocked free in a certain regard. And I'm not using a hobby knife because the blade on the hobby knife will break under this kind of stress. That is why I'm using this chisel thing here. I can press it in there with pr a pretty good amount of force. And it, will, it won't really damage the surface too much if I'm careful, but it definitely, it won't break. Yeah, and you can see that's coming out pretty clean. Okay, that's coming out pretty clean, as you would expect it to. Because again, it is not really attached to the surface that much. They're just there to make sure you can print, because you can't print in the air. And where it's trying to print in here would be printing in the air with the orientation I gave it. I mean, it can bridge some gaps, and it can bridge further than you think it can. But it still can't bridge everything perfectly. So you are going to have to have supports. And that's one thing about the resin printer. I don't use the resin printer that much. The one that prints with optically active resin. Because supports on that one are extremely different and I ain't figured them out yet. I figured out the supports on the filament printer, the F, I think they call it FMD, 
but the resin printer I've not figured out supports with at all. Oh, come on, you come out of there. Yeah, I don't want to come out of there. That's going to be fun. I'm going to start turning the surface, but this gets glued down, so I'm not that worried about tearing it up too much if I have to, because this is where the glue goes. It's just going to be ugly. And you start turning up the supports, they tear up really quickly and they make a mess. I've been noticing some of the YouTube channels I watch on this stuff, they do this in a bin and I am not getting this clean this one piece of support right here just does not want to come out no it doesn't it's got to come out of there though because it won't let me glue it into its spot without it coming out I am tearing this plastic up I don't like it I'm gonna figure a better way of taking this out I'm scratching this up I can't do that on the front face of this I want this to stay clean okay so it's okay to tear it up there and I've already removed all the supports up in here you can see they came out pretty cleanly not real clean they're not as clean as the parts that printed vertically but it's pretty clean in there I've got a, a few spots like right in here I'm gonna have to hit it with something or another okay still gotta get the supports off that all right so why have I not been making videos I realized the other day in part what that was okay I have been going through a lot of difficulty in life I we all go through these periods okay went through a divorce that was fun it was a yeah that sarcasm fun right there it was a pretty nasty divorce that I went through I won't lie she was vengeful and I need to stop there because it's not nice to talk bad at people. Okay? And if I continue down that line, I am not going to post this video. And I want to post this video. So anyhow, it was just a really bad divorce. Lots of things going on. We had COVID that happened. Yeah, you can see on this one, the two parts, the supports of these came out really easily. I have not removed the supports from up here yet, though. I'm still having problems with that. So I'm going to get my chisels out and get after that on this one. All right. And they are kind of ugly up here on this. But then we had COVID. COVID almost destroyed my business. I mean, completely destroyed it. And some of you are aware of what I did for a living. I ran a tutoring service for college students. Okay. And the tutoring service wasn't um, what you would picture. Like when you hear tutoring, you picture someone doing one-on-one -on -one in a room. I was not doing one-on-one, -on -one, okay? I was doing group tutoring with anywhere from 15 people in a group all the way up to a couple of hundred in a group. And the couple of hundred in a group paid very well. So I had a pretty good income going before COVID. Then COVID comes in and the government says, shut her down, shut her down. And well, the country complied at first. And then people started realizing, as you will now know, if you go start doing some research on it, those lockdowns didn't do anything. They just caused more drama than they helped. The government admits to that now, but no one's being held accountable. And that's one of my pet peeves is no one's being held accountable for what they did over the three or four years of covid i probably lost a million and a half in revenue which is quite a bit of money and that's money that would have went to my employees because i pay my employees very well you're not going to keep employees if you don't pay them well so i pay them very very well Ooh, i got some scratches on this one at the bottom don't like it this must have hit something I got scratched but anyhow I'm play, I pay my employees quite well so they lost too not to mention what do you think this did to the education of the students okay to have this 
I can tell you because I'm dealing with the after effects of this educational problem with the students right now. I'm dealing with it. Um, most of them didn't learn anything during COVID. It was easy for them not to learn anything, so they just didn't. They just shut down. Yeah. Where the sports are, these things look horribly bad. Whoa. I'm glad that won't really be seen too much. <sighs> yeah, look at that coming out. Look at the mess that's leaving on the desktop. Leaving one heck of a mess on the desktop. But anyhow, getting back to this, most of the students were damaged pretty heavily in COVID. This is one of the bad parts. And I have a bad part here so I can compare what it's supposed to look like to what it does. So I can tell where I need to pull the material apart. And wow, it looks pretty horrible underneath those supports. Look at this right here. Really bad. It's just like the shoulder pieces. So thinking putting supports on things is going to make them pretty. Uh oh, the supports make them pretty ugly. The company where I got the printer files from for this had pretty good suggested layouts for most of the parts and most of the parts really didn't need supports this got supports because i changed the orientation of it to get it to print a little bit better it almost i mean the person who designed this file for this knew what they were doing they designed it quite well i will have to say that so getting back to what i was talking about we were talking about um yeah look that part just came right out of there so this is almost as clean up as I'm going to get it down under here. As long as the parts slide in, <laughs> it needs to be cleaned up a little bit better. If you take a look at them, you can tell which one's which. This is the one with the bad printout on the belly. And this is the one that has the bad uh, supports on it. It, it, it. You're playing a game here. Um, you either deal with a bad area due to supports or you deal with a bad printout due to the shape. It's one or the other. So you have to figure out which one you're accepting. Now, getting back to what I was saying, it is very, very obvious that the students suffered during COVID with their learning abilities. Very, very obvious to me. Okay? They suffered a lot with their schoolwork. Yeah, this edge, again, doesn't matter because it sits inside here. Is this the one for this one? Yep. So it sits in here like this. So you're not going to see that edge. And this is upright. So there's another part that goes in here. So this is its leg, part of its leg. So I've got a little bit of scratches on the back of it. But that, oh, and I'm going to tear things up if I'm not careful. But that one's pretty good with its supports removed. So I can set that aside. But I keep getting distracted because I keep talking to you all about things. And I'm working at the same time. But what I was saying is it's very obvious the students suffered. And let's talk about how they suffered. Their attention spans when it comes to learning are non-existent. They didn't have to have it. They were not in the classroom paying attention to anyone. They were on Zoom calls. And I promise you 80% of them were playing games or something while they were doing their Zoom schoolwork. They were not paying attention. In fact, if you notice today's generation has attention deficit disorder in a major way because of their phones, their tablets, and other things. They couldn't sit here and pay attention to what I'm doing like this. I gave one of my nephews a um, real grade uh, new Gundam. And he got about halfway through it and quit. So I'm not surprised by that. It's just attention. They can't. They don't have the attention span to deal with stuff like this. They have to have the TV on talking. So one of the major hits was their attention span. They just don't have it. They just can't spend that much time paying attention to something anymore. They're just not made for it. They're not, they don't have it. Okay. The other thing is, it, their motivation is pretty shot. They don't have the motivation to do this stuff. It's just not there. 
Uh, why? They were taken care of during COVID. They got grades for doing nothing. They didn't have to try real hard. It is how it worked. Okay? It's what they learned. They learned that they didn't have to do these things and they could succeed. Well, college comes along and the math teachers in college are a different breed and they expect you to learn and understand what they're saying and you get tested over it and they are unforgiving. And that's how life is. So a lot of these people just don't know how to deal with the drama and the challenge that they're being presented with. And they are having trouble with it. They're having a lot of trouble with it. And along comes me, who makes money on their in um, insecurity, so to speak. How well they haven't learned. And I've earned my living off that for 20, 30 years. One, they come to me trusting me because of reputation. And that's another thing. I've had to completely rebuild my reputation from the beginning part of that's because wow this is rough part of that is because the student body changed i had a good reputation going covid comes that the student body that's there is gone for two and a half years three years the ones that are still there when covid ends are graduating seniors and they don't need to be there anymore there we go I got that one cleaned up they're graduating seniors and they don't need to be there anymore so they're not looking for help the new ones coming in don't even know how to do anything plus the first year or two after COVID the teachers liked not teaching they liked making a video on YouTube and telling the students to watch it and then giving a test that was unproctored so the students were just turning to Chegg and other sources and getting the work done. Yeah, it, it, it turned into a big, huge mess. In my business, making money off people not knowing how to do math took a huge hit. Uh, my income is slowly coming back, but I've had to work really hard and I've had to rebuild my reputation. So that's in part why I haven't made videos. Plus, I'm getting older. I am not a spring chicken. I'm in my late 50s and working really hard. I don't want to do it anymore. I am not going to lie. In addition, some of my employees got used to not working and they don't want to do it. So I'm having to fight them to get them to work. It's been fun. And all that fighting, all that work is wearing me out and leaving me with nothing, feeling of nothing at the end. Plus, my income is way down where it used to be, but my bills are not. So I'm having to figure out how to keep bills paid. I think a lot of you see where this is going. Okay. It's been, I've just been depressed. Let's just state what it is. I have been really depressed watching the life I built fall apart because of COVID. And then my divorce was also in part due to COVID because my income dropped dramatically. And with little money coming in, oh, it's, we're not going to go any further with that because I'm going to talk bad about someone. But with little money coming in, it was hard to keep bills paid. The good thing is, is I've almost got all that cleaned up and taken care of. So I'm almost back to where I was before COVID. I just don't have any retirement anymore because I spent lots of money. I mean, on my office rent, for example, is $5,000 a month. I had to spend that $5,000 a month to keep the business open. And yeah, that money don't come from anywhere. So what do you think that does to a retirement account? It's just gone. $5,000 a month, then that doesn't count my household bills. That's just my office bills. Trying to keep my business in existence. There were three, four tutoring companies here in College Station. And I'm the only one who really survived. There's one other that survived, but he had shifted to doing videos before COVID. So he just kept his format pretty much the way he was during COVID. 
So he survived too, but I don't know how much longer he's going to survive because the way he's doing his business, the students are complaining about it. So I might end up being the sole tutoring company that survives all this, which is good for business. For example, my physics class, my physics one class last year had about eight to 10 people coming into it last spring. That's threaded in there. Interesting. The threads are torn up a little bit. I'm going to have to get in there and clean that up a little bit better. It's threaded inside here. If I'd known that, I would have tried to twist this out instead of pry it out. It probably would have twisted it out just fine and not left me this mess. Well, these parts are going to get glued together anyhow. I know this thing has some screws so I'm going to have to glue together. There's a lot of gluing for this guy. But that shoulder joint is cleaned up and that's a shoulder joint. Okay? And the shoulder joint... Should this should snap on there and this goes on a shoulder like this Okay, this guy isn't small <laughs> I printed it at uh, 1.7 scale in other words, I multiplied Everything by 1.7 so I printed him a lot bigger than he was supposed to be I'm trying to print him jumbo the shinder size and this again is that uh, Sunlu PLA that didn't print real nicely and you can see it when you look at it, but it, there, most of the parts I use this on are internal parts. Now that I know, know that's a screw out, I'll get some pliers to it, and I will twist it out. Okay? And I will keep going on this here. But anyhow, so I've had to rebuild my business, and what I was saying is last spring, for example, my Physics 1 class, this is non-calculus physics that I teach for the students here, and I can... I can live here at A&M because there's 50, 60,000 students attending the university every every semester. There is a huge number of students that go to this school. So I don't need a huge percentage of the student body for me to make a good income. Okay? And anyhow, for example, last, so last spring, my Physics 1 class was probably about eight to ten students that was down because it was up to 30 or 40 before um covid hit well i'm now back up to uh, almost 40 of them so i've almost recovered my business from covid which i am very grateful for i've got one class size that is undersized from before covid now I'm going to break my pliers. These are Harbor Freight tools, which means, yeah, they're not going to hold up for anything. These are not Harbor Freight tools, so they're actually holding up fairly well to my work. But anyhow, I've only got one class that's undersized from what it was before COVID this time. So my income's almost back where it was, which I'm grateful for, and that's helping. The other thing that weighed heavily on me for the last year and a half is my mother. She got very, very sick. She got lung cancer. She had um, ovarian cancer. Got tired of taking the uh, cancer medicine and chemo. She got tired of chemo and just quit taking it. And she started getting sicker and sicker and sicker and it turned into lung cancer. And about a year ago, she, the doctor started telling her, you either take the chemo or you're not going to be here. And she refused to take the chemo, which, again, I don't blame her. It was a quality of life issue. She was just sick of it. She was tired of it. She wanted to see my dad again. And she knew she would see him when she passed away. So she quit taking him. The only thing she was living for anyhow were, my grand, were her grandkids or my daughter's. That's the only thing she was really here for. And they were coming to see her every once in a while. But with business picking up and my getting depressed, I wasn't visiting her as much as I should have. And she eventually got so sick that last October she moved in the house with me. And she was under hospice. That was fun because she, I was basically her... Her full-time caregiver. I was bringing her food in her room. I was preparing her meals. 
we had someone cleaning her room someone was coming by and I mean we had nurses come by constantly to check on her <clears throat> let's get you in there <clears throat> and you know having the constant stream of caregivers watching her slowly deteriorate all the stress of taking care of everything was wearing on me pretty good as you can all can imagine anyone who's gone through that you know how how uh, exhausting that can be just having your parents slowly pass pass away in front of you well she passed away in January I need to call on this uh, the thing I need to call on is one of her caretakers decided to steal her credit card her debit card and drain four thousand dollars out of her account so that was fun that we had she'd saved up a whole bunch of money got her house paid off and a bunch of other things with an oil inheritance from my uh, paternal grandfather and all that money in that account one of her caregivers stole her debit card and took it all fortunately I had already paid for the funeral so they didn't stop the funeral from happening that's in the police hands now so we will see what happens with that I'll keep you all informed it'll be fun to see what happens there I'm gonna tear this up if I'm not careful in here I need to get something a little gentler to clean this out with I'll probably do it on this end yeah I don't want to tear these parts up because anything I tear up I'm gonna to have to reprint and three weeks of printing I was so happy when this was done printing yeah uh, two days ago so so happy Anyhow, there's part of the reasons why I haven't been in here. Another reason is this whole house, while I'm taking care of my mom, it was destroyed. The kids just destroyed it. They're kids. They're going to do what kids do. And their toys ended up all over the house. I would have them clean up, and they kind of half-heartedly do it. And they learned that they could clean up by hiding things in cabinets and stuff, as kids do. And then they would go back to their mom, and I would come go looking for things and find cabinets full of toys. So I was spending most of my time just fighting with that. I finally got tired of it and set aside a room and just started piling all their toys in a room. They have not played with their toys that are in that room for quite some time. In fact, I don't even think they know what's in there. We bought a few new toys, but I keep telling them no toys until you get rid of toys And they told me I was unfair because I would tell them you will get a New toy only if you get rid of an old one first. Oh, I've, I've torn up the threads inside here Yeah, I've torn up the threads in here pretty bad I'm trying to get this piece out Well, it just popped right out of there now uh, We will see I might have to glue that in I think that bolt is just in there to make a tight ball joint right here. So I don't know if I've torn that up too bad. The rest of this cleaned up fairly nicely, just that one spot didn't. You. It does seem like this, the non-silk, is a bit stronger than the silk. It seems like it's tougher to tear up. It doesn't tear up as easy. Alright, so I got the shoulder pieces done now. I am going to start going through my box and cleaning up little or smaller pieces. And I'll keep talking for a little bit. I'm going to shut this off in a bit. Here's some more arm pieces. But I don't think these arm pieces need any cleanup. Okay. Like, I'm not sure, but I think this goes... I'm not sure where this goes. I'll have to look at it. This might be a leg piece. That would explain it. There's a hand. So you can see he's not very small. I, gotta, I'm, I need to get a lighter and clean up these strings. Lighters clean up the strings on these things real easily. So there's nothing that needs to clean up in there. Here's some more hand parts. Another arm with another hand. I need to clean that out. So I'm going to be going through these bins and cleaning things out. While I continue to talk. Yeah, if any time I'm boring you or you don't want to hear these rants, 
feel free just to quit watching this video. You'll get to see the end result of all this in a little while anyhow. Because I will do a final video on him and probably a glue up video. Because if I know my daughter, she's going to want to be there while I glue him up. She already told me that. She already told me she wants to help. I need to work on her uh, attention span. It is pretty short. And i got to work on her temper too. It's pretty short. She's got some temper issues and attention issues. The hand didn't print that nicely. Look at the red. How smooth that surface is compared to this. Again, it is just the silk PLA versus the regular PLA. I'm not even going to try to clean these little bits out of side, inside there. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to. Not without damaging the surface. Yeah, I'm not going to try. So he's going to stay that way. Anyhow, my mom got really sick. She passed away. Someone stole a lot of her money. Money that we were going to use to pay for bits and pieces of the house and other things. Um, the oil inheritance, we're working on getting over my name now. My brother's getting his half. I'm getting my half. There is a shoulder joint. So that's probably what pops into here. No, that can't be. It won't fit. There's got to be a leg joint. We'll find out. Some of these are going to be leg parts. Some of these are going to be hand parts. I didn't sort them correctly. But you can tell by looking at these things, there are a lot of parts on this guy. I have six bins, and all six of them are full of these parts. Here's bin number three. Okay. I already know that's got parts that need to be cleaned out. That's got parts that need to be cleaned out. These are leg parts. I've been wanting to know what this foot looks like. Yeah. That's going to need a little bit of work. But here's the shoe. Okay. You can see this guy is not going to be small when his shoes are this big. Now that may be, might be the wrong one. They are keyed right and left. Yep. That's fitting in there a little bit better. They are keyed right and left. So if you put them in backwards, you will know they won't go together correctly. But I don't think there's any other parts in here that have cleanup on them other than those two. And one of the things that does worry me about this guy, these are the joint parts. They are not very big. So he might get his joints torn up while you're working on him, which will not be good. And if I remember right, that's part of the feet. Yeah, that's part of the feet. That's the front part of the feet. It goes like this. Yeah, you can see this. And this part does have some bad spot on it. I'll clean that up real quick. Okay. So that's another foot part. So we've got our foot parts here. I just need to clean this one up. And put that away. I'm going to use the hobby knife for this. This is minor cleanup, and i got to be careful with it. Uh, well, that was pretty simple. It just popped right off. And I'm not being careful, and I'm getting it to discolor. I don't want to paint this guy. That's another discussion I wanted to have with you all, is painting. I, building models, for me, has always been building way more than painting. I'm decent at painting. I'm getting better the more I do it. But building has always been far more of the enjoyment than painting has been. Okay? Now that we've gotten through all my troubles for the last while. So you maybe you, you all should understand the whole house was completely trashed. At this point in time, I have only got the model room left. And the movie room. And that toy room I was talking about. Those are all I got left to get cleaned up in this house. The garage. I forgot about the garage a little bit. Oh, that cleaned out really nicely. I got a tool downstairs that's supposed to clean that up better. I'll have to go get it. And give it a try. Okay. But the, what I've got most of this house cleaned up. I've completely redone the house. I did a walkthrough a while back. I ought to do another one again. My, I, and I've just completely abandoned my other channel that I had set up. Just completely. And uh, another bad part, I have done 
a whole bunch of videos for that channel and never put them up. I've got videos for this channel I never put up. I get the videos done and then let them sit in the camera for days. For example, I have an unboxing video for both of the printers I have. The resin printer and the filament printer. I got an unboxing video from both. Never put the unboxing video up. I have a uh, video of unboxing quite a few things. I have built a whole bunch of models, none with paint, because again, what I was saying a few minutes ago, oh, that's threaded. This is going to be fun to clean up. I got to be careful cleaning this up because it's threaded. I tried to twist it out. If my support settings are correct, threaded parts like this will twist straight out. But apparently my support settings internal are not 100% correct. Now, this may have printed without supports right here. It may have, it may have not. It was on the print face this way. So printed up this way. So printed this way. This probably could have printed and closed the gap just fine. This one should have been able to. Like I said on um, one of these other parts here, this one, there were no supports in that threaded hole. And it printed that just fine. So if I get desperate, I might reprint this part with the, without any internal supports and see how it prints. It's a setting in Cura. I'm using Cura software for this. I don't use Cura for the resin printer. Uh, anyhow, we're getting back to the model building in time. I've always enjoyed the putting together part more than I've enjoyed the painting part. It's just been me. It's just who and what I am. I'm okay at painting. I can do it. I can get some decent results painting. Fairly decent results. Results I'm proud of. I can say that. I've got a couple of models that I've painted. I'm very proud of the results of that. It's just, again, the building part has been more for me. I survived years of not building models by building Lego. All right, I will clean that up later. But I su survived years of model built, not building models by building Lego. Because it's the building that does a lot for me. It's the building part that lets me calm down and relax. So I enjoy the building part, and that's in part why I got over to the dark side of Gundam building. Because they're molded in color for the most part, which I will admit makes it easy to ignore paint. I am halfway through a Gundam right now that I am going to paint. I is not put together because I'm being stubborn and making sure that I don't just slap the thing together and I paint it. It needs to be painted. Here's part of him. Okay. That will look good with some paint on it. And I have some very good paints for Gundam models. So I'm going to make myself do some painting. What I'm waiting for right now is finals to finish. Since I work with college students and finals are at the end of April, we just started April, I know, but the end of April is coming quickly. Okay. End of April will be coming quickly. Ah, that's just rough inside there. Again, I got a tool downstairs. It's one of the things I'm learning about this PLA because it's printed from one long continuous thread of plastic for the most part, it can be pretty challenging to clean it up. It does not like getting cleaned up. It just doesn't. I'm gonna try to do this one a little bit different here. The tip of my knife blade is already broken. But I've been waiting for finals to finish to really get in here and start painting. Because I'll have like two or three weeks without the kids. And my kids are still fairly young. They're so young that I cannot abandon them while they're here. I need to pay attention to them. They need that attention still. I can't, I tried. I taught them how to play Goat Simulator 3. That's an interesting game. You're basically a goat in a town and you're somewhat human in power. You can wear clothes, you can drive a car, you've got guns, 
but no one dies. It's kind of it's a sandbox game, but there is very low violence to it. It's more cartoony than anything. Like you shoot someone with a gun, they fly across the room, play dead for a little bit, and then get up and start walking. They don't die. So I don't feel too ga bad playing it with the girls. And they like it, but if I try to let them play by themselves without me, they won't play it. I need to be there with them. They need their daddy as part of it. I was a little bit more careful with this one, and it came out a lot better with the threads. Which is good. Not this one. I want the pointy one. came out a lot better with the threads. Although they're going to take some cleaning up in here. I gotta glue the um, screws together. Yeah, that's one thing I can do without the girl, without my daughter here. But anyhow, they're still on the young side. They still need me there with them. They won't be on their own, and I don't know how long that will take them where they're okay being on their own. But until that time, I am with them instead of in here alone doing my solitary thing. Now, I might sound like I'm trying to figure out how to ignore my daughters. I'm not. I'm not trying to ignore them at all. I do know when I'm highly stressed out that building things helps me a lot. It helps me an awful lot to build things. So, It's good for me to come in here. I just found myself on my off weeks. Here's his head, by the way. So you can see, he is, again, not very small. He's got a pretty decent sized head. And this is all the screws I need to glue together in this bin with his head. The screws printed halvesies like this. So I need to screw them together, glue them together so I can use them. I will do that soon. I'm tr I've already glued two cubes together with that 3D goop. And it, they're already holding pretty good. Oh yeah. I think that 3D goop glue is probably going to outdo the super glue. It's got a good chance of outdoing the super glue. So let me clean up his eyes right here. Once his eyes are cleaned up, this part has all of its supports removed. But anyhow, getting back into this. So model building has been kind of put on hold because of work, life. My health hasn't been the best. Has not been. It seems like every time I do something to improve my health, some, something stops it. It's been very irritating. For example, I bought a rowing machine and I have only used it once. There we go. Got one eye out of there. And I think I might buy a bicycle this week so that I get some exercise in, which will improve my health. I was diagnosed as type two diabetic about two years ago, and that is not helping my life, okay? I've gained some weight, I'm at 235 pounds, and in high school I was 130. So I am way over my high school weight. I gotta lose some weight. I gotta do something about this. So buying a bike or something will be good. I do watch my diet and for those that are wondering. Like today, I was really late to work and that has to do with what one of the stat teachers polled. More than one of the stat teachers, I shouldn't say one. You, this is not good. Um, they told their students last week that certain topics would not be on their test. And then, guess what the teachers did? I'm going to have to fix that eye all right. I'm going to have to fix his eye right here. But I'm going to do that very carefully in a little bit. I'm going to have to fix the boogers on his eye. But again, you can see he is not really that small a scale. There's his head, okay? Compare him to a 1-100 scale Gundam. There's a 1-100 scale Gundam. 
he's a lot bigger. I don't know what his scale is, but his he's looking pretty decent right now. I'm liking this. For those that are curious, maybe this will help you all recognize what it is I've printed. Oh, come on, don't go falling apart. And again, the file was free on Toy Makers 3D. And this might be considered a bootleg by some. It might not be considered a bootleg by some. I guess it just depends on how you feel about certain things. Because the people that own the intellectual property probably don't really have anything to do with this printout. There we go. There, now his head's together. He's missing side pieces. But that might help some of you recognize him. It's Gurren Logon. I, again, this did not print well. It might print better if I print it vertically, but the supports will tear it up if I print it ver vertically. I have a couple of them. I, have, I could also resort to the resin printer on this and print this part on resin. But you can see both of them are pretty bad. He was a really beat up robot, so I don't think it matters that much. I'm going to have to fix that eye booger on him in a minute. Let's go ahead and do that. Then we can put his head away. Might have to go downstairs to fix his eye booger, though, and get the... Oh, no. His eye booger is support material that just needs to come off. I can see it. The support material didn't come out completely correct. That's what his eye booger is. It came clean, clean on one side and off the other. Yeah, I can see it from the back side. You can see that there's an eye booger in there, and it's the support material that didn't break away from the bottom of the eye. So anyhow, what I was saying is that my thing has always been putting together, not painting. Oh, I'm cutting it. I'm going to have to reprint this eye. I just cut it too heavily. I don't think I can repair that. Maybe I didn't cut it too heavily. Let me look at it. I might have to reprint his face. That's okay. This is a very short printout right here. This face is a very, very short printout to print. It's nothing to print this. Okay? So if I tore it up and I didn't tear it up too badly, I can... I'll salvage it, but I will repent this face very quickly. I'm just going to do that. Right now I'm printing Easter eggs for the girls. I hit that with some glue. You may not be able to notice it at this point. I might have gotten it cleaned up enough. A little bit of sanding, a little bit of glue right in there, and it might be fine. This is going to be a long video because of my talking. Get some sandpaper in there. This little sanding stick isn't deforming enough. Yeah, but that cleaned it up a lot. If we look, you can see it cleaned it up an awful lot. <laughs> Running this through there, cleaned him up a lot. Here we go. Yeah, I, I, I salvaged that. I'm not going to reprint that. Okay, I got one more bin to go through, and I'm done going through all these parts. And then I will glue the screws together tomorrow. Because Miri will be here Wednesday. These are waste parts. Okay, he's got a pretty good waist on him, but he's also pretty large inside. I don't think I have to clean up any of the waste parts. No. I don't have to clean up any of the waste parts. That's not a waste part, that's an arm part. I do have to clean up that drill, so last thing I'm doing tonight is cleaning up that drill. And I've got them all cleaned up. I hope this has helped some of you understand where I am at in life.
Oh, I gotta clean up the face a little bit too. I gotta take the face apart. I just noticed that there's some boogers in his nose. Okay, but I, hopefully this has helped you all understand a little bit where I am in life, why I haven't been here all that much. This is the support piece right here in the center. I wonder if I can get lucky and no, of course not. I don't know how far up this support piece runs. You can tell it's support material with how it's coming apart. That is support material. I don't know how far up it goes. I know it's threaded in there. Oh, hey, that's popping all over the room. <laughs> it goes in there pretty far, obviously. It goes way up in there. And again, I know this part is threaded, so this is going to be fun to clean up. Depending on how it is in there. One of this guy's hands comes off and this goes in place of his hand. That was one of his things. You got him really upset. The drill started popping out everywhere on him. Oh, I can see the threading in there. The threading in there is actually really nice. Just the supports are clean to the threading a little too much. Anyhow, again, hopefully this lets you see everything. But model building, let me, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about today about model building. That might be enough of that removed. The threads in this thing look good. I'll show them to you all in a minute. I just need to get some more of this removed in here. And I might have to resort to the chisels. Okay. If you look up in there, you can see the threads in there look really good. Hello, Jam. Jam is a cat, if you don't remember. That is another thing I'm facing right now. Tomodachi, who I have had for over 15 years, has intestinal cancer. I had $2,000 worth of surgery on him over Christmas. And the vet told me it's just going to come right back. While it's non... Um, it's malignant. It's not going to go away. They can't just remove it. Okay, so I am stuck with that cancer. So he's only got about a year left to live at the most. And you can tell he's getting old. He doesn't use a litter box anymore. So we have puppy pee pads where he likes to go to the bathroom and he does that. Jam, however, is using the litter box like a champion. He's going to be up here in a minute because don't go tearing up my chair, Jam. You can hear him back there. I got that cleaned out. There we go. That was the last of the cleanup I had to do on this guy. I really like how this drill came out. It is beautiful. So this gets glued on there. And there's a piece that goes in there for his hand. I had the piece in my hands a minute ago. It screws in there. And this goes on the end of his arm. And we will see if that arm can support the weight of this thing. Because I enlarged his scale so much. He is going to be about two and a half foot tall. If you can't tell with the size of those feet and the size of those hands. I mean, this is half his foot right here. So he is not going to be small. Okay. And this is the top part of his leg. It goes like this. He's got a joint up here on his leg. His foot comes out down here. Like this is the back half of his foot. I think, or this is the front half of his foot. I'm pretty sure it's the back half of his foot. So you can see he is not that small. All right, why did I print him so big? I don't know. I'm crazy. Because I could. I also have a bunch of jumbo machinders, if you don't know what those are. Uh, going back in time to the 70s, they were called Shogun Warriors. Mattel had them, they came over from Japan. We had Rodan, we had um, Dragoon, and we had Mazinger. 
There was also three others that were a little on the harder side to get. Um, uh, four others, actually. I've got all of them, including Godzilla and um, Rodan. Those two are extremely hard to find these days, Godzilla and Rodan. All right, so here's the head. I just need to clean up his nose a little bit in here. I don't know if I really want to take him apart to do so. If I just put my glasses on and look, I can probably cut that out with my knife really fast. Yeah, I did. It wasn't too much to cut out. Oh, it didn't cut out. It's down in the back. It's just a print booger. If I get it lighter after it, I'll get it out of there really fast without scratching this up. There we go. Got the print booger out. So, what I was saying is building was my thing, not painting, and I will finish this off by finishing that discussion since I no longer have any distractions. Building was my thing, not painting, okay? The thing about building models right now is if I panic and feel like I can't do it, I quit. It's been a long time since I've painted. It's been a long time since I've done anything of any extreme difficulty with model building. So I just panic and quit. That is not a good way to be. I will admit this. I need to amend my ways there. Okay. And I'm working on it. I'm working on changing my ways. Okay, I got some cubes for super glue. I'm going to super glue and quit. I am working on changing my ways. The Gundam models have been good because they're, they're stress-free. I can just set them aside if I'm feeling stressed and not come back to them for a little while. I can just do that. <laughs> and it's not going to hurt anything. Set them aside, come back to them later. Who cares? All right, there's my oof. Of course, I get the super glue on my fingers. There's my super glue test. Okay, I got my super glue done. I've got it on my fingers. So again, I get working and I just lose uh, time, lose confidence. I quit. In addition to that, I go through periods where drama starts up and I have to stop and take care of the drama. Okay. For example, the girl who stole all my mom's money. That comes up and I spend an entire week going to the police, going to the bank, and it just shuts me down. So until I can get the drama to stop in my life, I can get some time, I can get some energy, I can get this house straightened up. This has not been a priority. Now, I'm getting in here a little bit more consistently, so it's slowly turning towards a priority. But it, I don't think it'll ever be a full-on priority like it used to be. Not for a while. <laughs> Not until this room is cleaned up. I will do a stop in a second, and I'm going to... Here, I'll just pull the camera off. <laughs>